Let's talk AMC stock and in particular that $35 price level and why it matters so much and why in my opinion it is a very, very important level. And let me be very clear about this. I'm not trying to come across like $35 is some great discovery on my part or that I have some sort of great you know, talent in order to have discovered this area, the exact opposite. I assure you people that use charts, understand charts, are gonna be watching that very same area. And I say that because when a lot of people are watching the same level, wondering the same thing, call it a self-filling prophecy, call it whatever you want, it can create pretty big, pretty volatile price movement. And that's where $35 here is coming into play. And I should also note that I'm recording this Monday after the close, this video will go out on Wednesday uh, morning-ish. So where the price is as of now, we'll have to see. It could be well below 35, could be up above 35 still. And we'll see how that plays out. Maybe I'm gonna look really stupid um, in terms of giving my thoughts now and then have the price do something completely different. But I'm posting this video regardless and we'll see how it all turns out. But the, where the, or the reason why this $35 mark is so important is because it corresponds with this volume day right there, which has been a massive, massive volume. And that's the day where AMC kind of hit the peak of being everybody talking about it. Over 750 million shares. The price went from a low of 35 all the way up to over 70 in the same day. But the point here being is the lowest anybody either bought or sold on that day was $35. So you know that for sure since that day moving forward, the lowest anybody, again, had the chance to buy or sell was at $35. So now let's look at a couple different scenarios and why this seems very important moving forward. So let's look at it from a short's perspective. And a short, at the worst case, would have been an entry of 35. Obviously, a short's best case would have been getting in up there. But worst case scenario for a short was at $35. So let's look at it like this. And let's see, and you can kind of just ask yourself too, is, so let, let's put this over here. And let's say, and that represents 35. And let's just say that you are a short that got in at the worst possible time. You literally shorted on that day at 35 and then you had to sit through all sorts of pain. Well, if the price comes down here, so it comes down here and then gets to 35 and breaks down through it, what does that do for you? Well, from a short side of position, that would all of a sudden put you in the green. You would now be profitable on the trade. And the dynamic here, and I, I realize people agree, disagree with it, but from a trade management philosophy standpoint, some people believe in adding to a winner. Maybe you've heard it before, never add to a loser, but hey, you know what? You can add to a winner because it's winning, you were right. So yeah, add some more to it and just amplify your gains that much more. So if the price does break through 35, you're gonna have not only the people that got in at 35, worst case scenario, but you're gonna have people that got in there and 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 there. I mean, everybody, anybody that was short, no matter where they got, you know that there is bare minimum 700 million shares plus and all this where they were now profitable from the short side. And if those shorts, even just uh, you know, maybe half of them, a quarter of them, if they believe in, you know what? Let's add to a winner. Well, in order for a short to add to a winner, what has to happen? Well, they have to sell more. So if they sell more, that could very realistically push the price that much further down and just you know amplify the selling pressure in the downwards direction. On the flip side of things, let's think about it from a long side. So a long, best case scenario that they could have gotten since the massive volume day was what? Well, getting right there, right? If you bought at 35, as of now, you're still in the green. And this is where, you know, it's, it's kind of one of these, from a psychology standpoint, it is easy to sit there and say, I'm not selling, I'm holding strong, diamond hands, diamond hands, while you're in the green. And people that were at 35 bare minimum, they are still in the green. So the question becomes, well, again, if the price comes down to 35 and breaks down through it, what's gonna happen with those people? Now, to be fair, maybe they truly do mean that. Maybe they truly do have diamond hands and they're gonna hold. But you also have to acknowledge the fact that that's gonna be a pretty big psychological kind of rewiring that needs to happen because those people have been sitting there for basically over a month now watching and being in the green, being in the green. Sure, they've watched their green get smaller and smaller and smaller, but they're still profitable. Their position is still in the green. But at a break of 35, you're gonna have everybody, every single long, quite literally, now in the red. Because again, the lowest it got there was 35. That's why it's so important is that's literally the line in the sand where you can officially say, it doesn't matter where you bought. Even if you got the best case scenario from the long side, 
those people are now officially in the red. So do you think, is it possible that some of those people are gonna say, holy smokes, I've been watching this in the green, but now all of a sudden the price is broken down below it. You know what? This is too much for me. I, I, I gave it a chance. It didn't, it did, what I thought it was gonna do, it, it didn't do it. Now, not only are all my gains gone, but now my, it's eating into my principal. Like I'm losing my principal amount and those people very well could sell. Again, maybe some people truly do have diamond hands, but you gotta weigh the fact that there's probably gonna be other people that, that they're not gonna be able to psychologically get over the fact that all their gains are now gone. And the, the kicker here is, well, what are the shorts doing? Well, they could be adding to a winner. So they're gonna be, so the longs are now seeing their losses get quicker and quicker and quicker, bigger and bigger and bigger, again, after having already been green. So if they decided to just say, you know what, I'm done. Well, that's gonna accelerate the selling that much more. So if $35 breaks, there's gonna be those two camps that are, are gonna be one side loving, maybe adding to the position, adding to a winner. The other side, very well potentially just waving the white flag, trying to, you know what, I better manage my risk. I don't wanna lose every, I, I, I gotta just, I gotta be done with it. So that's a potential. But the other side, the flip side of things. So let's once again, map out 35. And let's say that the price does indeed come down to 35. So it comes down here, but then it does that. Now let's look at the shorts. What could a short be thinking? A short is gonna be what? Are they gonna be happy by that or are they gonna be disappointed? Well, they're gonna be very disappointed. They're gonna be saying, oh no. It came down to 35. It was looking great. It was looking like the buyers were finally surrendering, but now look at this thing, it is bouncing. And a short is gonna be saying potentially just what the longs were saying. You know what? We gave it a chance. We thought that it was overvalued. We thought that it would roll over, but when it got down to the quote unquote rollover point at 35, all of a sudden the price is starting to bounce. We, we can't do this anymore. We cannot sit here and do this. That was the play. We thought it would come back down. We thought it would roll back over. It did, but it got zero continuation. It got zero continuation down through 35. So because it didn't get any, you know, we better just get out. We gotta just manage our risk. We gotta get out. Now, in that situation, what, what does a short have to do in order to get out, in order to just end things? Well, they gotta buy, right? Because that's how a short exits the trade. They have to buy. So when you have a bunch of shorts on starting to buy, hey, you know what? It's valid to think that that could start to amplify the movement back in the upwards direction. So if the price comes down here, like I said, starts to bounce and you got shorts, okay. Now you got more shorts and right. Now I'm not gonna say that's gonna cause a short squeeze up to $1,000, but it's, it's more than plausible to think that that could create a, a, a squeeze once again, where you start to get that much more organic momentum. You start to get back into that mainstream headlines again and you never know what could happen at that point. But here's the other thing is, yeah, you have shorts starting to turn around, but what is that gonna do from a longs perspective? Again, lowest it got from all the people that were buying. It's normal for those longs to be nervous. Oh no, it's, it's right down at where I got in. Oh, oh, but it's starting to bounce. All right, showing strength. So if something is showing strength, what would a long potentially wanna do? Maybe the higher it goes, then that's gonna put more longs back into the green. And what do we have here? Well, now we have a, maybe these longs are saying, I wanna add to a winner. It's, it's bouncing and the higher it bounces, the more of these longs are getting back into the green and they get back into the green. Hey, may, let, let's look to add to a winner. So now you have longs adding to a winner, buying. You have shorts needing to wave the white flag, buying. And that could produce a very, very interesting bounce from that level. So at the core, in my opinion at least, I don't see this at all coming down to 35 and then just hanging right around 35. In my opinion, if it gets down to 35, it's gonna be fireworks to the downside, it's gonna be fireworks to the upside for all these, all these reasons just discussed. Now, to be fair, maybe $35 doesn't even come into play, but as of now, it just seems like there's a lot of downwards pressure right now, downwards momentum. So I don't think anybody would be shocked to see the price at least visit 35. But I have no problem at all saying, I don't know what it's gonna do if it gets down to 35. All I know is that I'm gonna have my popcorn, I'm gonna be sitting there and it's gonna be like a good movie. I don't have a position in AMC. I, I, I day trade it, sure, but as far as some sort of long-term position, I just sit there, I'm, I'm enjoying the spectacle, I'm enjoying the, I mean, there's no, there's no better dramatic movie out there right now than AMC, um, and that's what I'm gonna be watching. But I'm not sitting here saying that one thing is gonna happen over the other at 35. I'm just saying that because 35 is the bare minimum bare minimum of that 750 million share a day, you know there's gonna be a lot of people that care about 
that level. So what happens when it gets down to there? Like I said, uh, your guess is as good as mine. I'd love to hear, or maybe let me know in the comment section. Do you think it'll get down to 35? If you do, what do you think will happen? Maybe there's another price level that you think of. I'd love to hear down in the comment section, your opinion of it. But to me, 35 is definitely that line in the sand. And like I said, I personally think it'll get tested just because of the current downwards drift of things. It seems likely that it'll at least get tested. But if it gets down there, like I said, and if I'm right in that regard, I have no problem admitting, I have no idea what it'll, what it'll want to do after it gets down to 35, other than just knowing the fact that there's gonna be so many people, long, shorts, everybody in between watching that level. So we'll see what happens with it. But those are my thoughts on it. AMC 36, highly, highly important level. So let's see how the next couple of days and weeks all play out. First off, thanks so much for watching the entire video. Real quick, before you go, I wanna invite you to a live webinar, web class, training, workshop, online event, whatever you wanna call it, but it will be me live revealing to you what I discovered that has allowed me to transform myself from being an employee to being my own boss, including how I had only one losing day out of 73 days in total. I'm going to cover three keys that have helped me unlock profitable consistency within the markets. The first key is super weird, but in a productive type of way. The second key is super awesome because it quite literally is wired into our DNA as humans, making it very easy to use. But in a cruel way, this becomes a pitfall for many traders. I'll explain it all though, including how to avoid the pitfall that it creates for some. And yeah, the third key, when you hear it, sounds way too good, way too, good to be true, but it's not, and I'll show you how it all works. Then at the end, I open it up for a question and answer session that is, again, totally live. Even if you can't make the live session, please still sign up as it will be recorded, and you can go back and watch the replay that I will send you. Click the image on the screen or click the link down in the description box so you can get the date and time and claim your spot, which I should note is limited due to the fact that this truly is a live event. If you have any questions, let me know. If not, I'll be seeing you soon.